Welcome to STEM at Home. I'm Deborah from Prince George's County Memorial Library System. Thank you for joining us. Today we are going to make a simple spectroscope. And this project was inspired by the rainbow flag. We'll see how the flag inspired this project in a moment. But first let's focus on the inspiration itself, the rainbow flag. In case you've lost track of time, Today is Friday, June 12th, and June is Pride Month. Pride Month is a time identified specifically to commemorate the impact of the LGBTQ plus community on our history and culture, locally, nationally, and worldwide. The rainbow flag is a symbol of the very diverse LGBTQ plus community recognizing all its members and celebrating their contributions and achievements. If you'd like to learn more about LGBTQ plus pride, excuse me, and the rainbow flag, the library has lots of resources to explore. Two books uh, you may want to consider. Pride, the Story of Harvey Milk and the Rainbow Flag by Rob Sanders and Stephen Salerno and This Day in June by Gail E. Pittman are both available as ebooks through Overdrive, one of the library's virtual resources. The library's webpage or the website also has an LGBTQ plus heritage page with recommended resources, uh, a timeline, videos, links to community resources, and, and much more. So you may want to check that out as well. I'll add these resources and links to the chat, and I'll also cite them again at the end of our project. But let's now turn to uh, the materials that we are going to use to build our spectroscope. Before we make our spectroscope, what is it? And why do I say the rainbow flag inspired our project today? Well, a spectroscope is a general name for any device that breaks light into different wavelengths for the specific purpose of studying the origin of the light. Or you could say that it is an instrument used to examine the component colors of light. And we'll talk more about what that means after we make our spectroscope. But as you can see on our graphic here of an image produced by a spectroscope, we're talking about rainbows. So that's how, that's how the rainbow flag served as the inspiration for our project today. Now here are the materials we're going to use. There are many ways to make a simple spectroscope, so I've grabbed ideas from a few different sources to come up with, I hope, a simple, clear plan for our project. And these are the materials we will use. Um, an empty paper towel roll, a craft knife, and or scissors, I'm going to use both. A blank or old CD, so one that you don't need to use anymore. A ruler, I have one that curls up because it's very long, but here's my ruler. Pencil or marker, I've got both here. And some cardboard or chipboard. I'm, I'm just going to use an empty cereal box for our project. Um, and a small piece of cardstock or an index card. We, we'll only need one. But here's some. And tape or an, another adhesive. We also may use, I'm going to use some aluminum foil. This is optional and I'm just going to use some recycled foil that's clean. Um, a neighbor had some saran wrap under this, so it's it's uh, clean, re uh, recycled. We're going to reuse that foil. And the idea here is to keep an airtight spectro, well, it's not airtight, a light-tight spectroscope. So that's why I might use some foil to keep um, light from seeping into cracks that we don't want it to seep into. So I'm going to clear this away, and then we'll get started with our project. Our finished spectros spectroscope is, is going to look something like this. I made this one with a slightly larger tube, but our, our paper towel tube will just will work just as well. And um, you can see that we've got a tube that is capped on both ends, and it has 
a 45 degree angle where our CD is going to intersect the, the tube. And directly across from that 45 degree angle, looking direct uh, straight at our CD, is a little eye hole, a peephole, where we can look into our spectrograph, our spectroscope, excuse me. And on the top, we have a slit for light that we want to come into the spectroscope. We've got our foil down here to try to keep extraneous light out. So that's, wh that's what we're going for. This is a slightly larger version of the spectroscope that we will make today. And first, we're going to get our cardboard or our chipboard. In my case, I'm using the old cereal box. This is what we're going to do first. We're going to trace, we're going to take our marker and trace around the outside of the paper towel too. And we actually need two of these, so I'm going to do another one. Kind of smash down there a little bit. Oh, let me start over again. Basically, these are just going to be the tabs, the tops of our um, spectroscope. So we're going to cut those out and set them aside. And we'll just. You know, be pretty liberal about how you're going to cut it out so that you make sure it, cock it, it uh, covers the whole bottom. We're going to try to make them as round as possible, but we're going to just tape these onto the end and, uh, and use them later. use those later, set them aside. Now, the trickiest part now is making our 45 degree cut on our paper towel. And figuring out the math to make a curve for our 45 degree angle is, is pretty complicated. It's pretty complicated math. So we're going to do something a little simpler, messier, but it'll still work just fine. Okay, so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to not mash it, but we're going to flatten our tube a little bit and we're going to measure one inch up from the bottom of our what will be our spectroscope right at the bottom of the tube. And I'm just going to, I think I'll use my marker again so I can see it better. I'm just going to mark one inch from the bottom because we do need some space at the bottom. Then, from my mark that's one inch from the bottom of the tube, um, I am going to measure the diameter of our tube. So we do need to measure across the top of the tube. And the diameter, of course, is, is not around and it's not halfway, it's from one side of the circle across the center of the circle to the other side of the circle of the tube and it's one and one half inches. So I'm going to measure up one and one half inches and put a mark there. Okay, so now more or less the, uh, the angle will be 45 degrees we hope here. Okay, I'm going to use my ruler again, and I'm going to, it can be a soft curve up here. I'll show you what I mean by that, because we're cutting, it is a tube. We're pretending this is two-dimensional, but it's really a three-dimensional object that we're trying to put a 45-degree angle in. So this is all kind of rough math here. But I'm going to draw a line from that, that measurement I made of one and a half inches almost all the way to my, the end across from my, that's one inch from the bottom. So we've got our, our, our curve here. And now I'm just going to use my scissors and carefully cut sort of a curve 
but basically just down almost to the end, but not quite, because we don't want to cut all the way through the tube. I'm gonna puff it up again, and we've got our slit for our CD. Okay, next we are going to make our, our eye hole here, our, to look into our spectroscope. And for that, I am going to use um, a craft knight, knife. Now the location, if we sort of flatten out our tube again, the location for the peep hole is going to be across from our, our um, 45 degree angle, but not uh, sort of just slightly above. I'll, I'm going to use my marker here to make a little outline for it. It doesn't have to be perfect, as you know, none of my, none of my cuts really are here, but these projects, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to use my old, um, my cereal box to, to serve as protection against this. Now this is something a parent or an adult should do. Get an adult to help you or to do this step because we are going to cut out our eye hole, our people with the craft knife. got our peephole. Now we need to go back to our end caps, but if you will recall, our spectroscope needs a slit at the top, so we do need to make that slit. So we're going to take one of our ends and we're going to make a window in here. Again, I'm going to use the craft knife and um, just kind of in the middle. It's not going to be very big. I want to. I want to make a little window. which it looks okay but it's a little bit bigger than the slit we want so we're going to take one of our we're going to take one of our um, index cards we're going to cut it in half and I don't know how even my cut is so I'm going to use the two ends of the, um, the index card to make an even sl slimmer slit. And I'm going to have that peek through our window and now you can see it's a much smaller, smaller slit. And I'm going to just use some, some glue to make that stick to the index. You could use tape, you could use whatever. We're just trying to make a much smaller slit for our spectroscope for the light to come in. Okay. Okay. I think it's right. I'm trying to get going this on. All right. So I think this is dry enough for us to go. And I don't know how well you can see that, but we have a very thin slit. You may wonder why we need a thin slit. We'll, we'll talk about that um, a little bit, but uh, this is our. This is all the light we that we want to come into our spectroscope through that thin line. So as small as you can get it is great. As small of a gap as you can get. I'm just gonna cut that out. Now we have our both both caps for our spectroscope. 
Now, you want to make sure you put the caps on the right end. We have our, our hole down here, our peep hole down here. That is where the solid uh, piece is going to go. And I've got, this is some heavy duty duct tape we can use to put that on the bottom. You can use regular tape, masking tape, or, um, or clear plastic tape like you would use to wrap a present. But the idea, I'm using, we'll see how well this works, I'm using some um, duct tape because in addition to being really good at uh, keeping stuff together, it's also pretty good at keeping light out. So, let's get this on here. Oops. On the bottom, by the hole, uh, by the uh, peephole, that's where our solid cap goes. Now, the, if you're using masking tape or other tape, that'll be a little easier probably to manipulate, but I'm going to put some foil over it too, so it'll be extra light tight. And on the back, uh, on the top, On the top, the way we orient our, our slit is important. You want it to be, you want, you want it to be, um, I don't know really the best way to say this, you want it to be perpendicular to the line down to your, your light spot. So it's going flat across the top like a T down to your, your um, eye hole there. So, I think I'm going to use glue for this right now. Again, you can use tape to put this on top. The idea is just to seal it so light does not get in. Okay. And here's where, if you have some foil, it can be a reinforcement against light seeping in. You can tape that on too, or glue it on, just to try to keep light out. I might cut that down a little bit. Let's get some. really know the best way to cut duct tape. Tears when she gets started. Okay. Let's get this on here, get the light out. That's actually working a little better than the foil probably. However you want to reinforce this is fine, but I think that'll that'll work just fine. Last, oops. Okay, so the last step for our spectroscope, and yours probably looks a little prettier than mine, but I think this will do the job, is to put in the CD. And remember, this is just an old CD that I don't need to, anymore. Um, and we're going to put this, the shiny side of the CD is how is going to be facing up in our spectroscope. So we'll put that shiny side in our cut with 45 degree angle. And now our spectroscope 
uh, is ready for experimentation. So let's see how it works. Okay, to use our spectroscopes, we're going to use the end of the spectroscope that has a slit in it, and that slit we're going to direct to a light source, any kind of light source. We're going to try some different kinds of light sources, but we're going to direct this to the light source and then look through the hole, the eye hole in our spectroscope and see what we see. Yes, and I, I, I am going to try to take pictures of what I see to share these with you. But okay, so I'm looking at my, I'm not sure what kind of lamp this is. I guess I should find out, but um, so at this light source, yes, I definitely see something interesting in my spectroscope. I'll take a picture. Um, and now let's try uh, some different light sources, like let's go outside and use sunlight. We're not going to point it directly to the sun, but we'll use out, uh, outdoor sunlight. Okay, I'm outside and um, I definitely, what I'm looking at in the spectroscope uh, definitely looks different. Um, we did this at the window too. I, I'm going to try to take a picture probably from the window because it's so bright out here. But um, yeah, let's, let's compare the, the photos of the two different light sources and, and talk about what's happening. Before we made our spectroscopes, I said a spectroscope is a device that breaks light into different wavelengths in order to study the origin of that light, or it's an instrument used to examine the component colors of light. So when we saw different color patterns in our spectroscopes, we were looking at different sources or different types of light. You may already have known that, that light has something to do with wavelengths. Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation, and I really can't tell you the significance of electromagnetic radiation, but I can tell you that the difference between light and other electromagnetic radiation, such as x-rays or ultraviolet or infrared, is that light has a wavelength that our eyes can see. However, we can see, our eyes can see more than one wavelength. So we can see a whole spectrum of wavelengths, and these different wavelengths appear to our eyes as different colors. All of us already have some familiarity with this. The separation of sunlight into its component colors forms a rainbow. And these different, um, when we see a rainbow, we see rays of sunlight going through water droplets. That's what forms the rainbow. So when light rays pass through our spectroscopes, the CD caused the light to spread into the spectrum of colors or wavelengths that made up that particular light. CDs have circular tracks that are very, very close together and serve as what's called diffraction grating. So I hope you enjoyed constructing your spectroscope and I hope you use it to investigate other types of light. You can take it outside if there's enough light to see planet light or neon lights or, or different lights and see what different patterns you see inside your spectroscope. For more information about light and its properties, I recommend the short science trek video by PBS Learning Media called Light, Let There Be Light. It's less than five minutes long and provides a thorough introduction to what light is and how it behaves. And of course, the library has books on light, such as Light by Ellen Lawrence, which includes more experiments to demonstrate the properties of light. Um, again, thank you for joining us for STEM at Home today. I'm glad you are here, and I hope you join us again soon for one of our other um, virtual programs at Prince George's County Memorial Library System. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm a little bit nervous. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead. Is it ready? Mm, cool. Okay.
so much to everyone who joined us today. This was such a delight, and I'm really excited to make my own version of the book. I hope you are too. If you want to reference this video in the future, you can check us out on YouTube at BBC Paramount for an archive of all of our Spin National activities and other activities.